Welcome to ZDNet's DIY IT Project Lab, where I'm stress testing RAID devices for your entertainment and edification. Today we'll be looking at the fifth of seven NAS products to see how it performs. Let's put this project into context. The whole purpose of a RAID is that if a drive fails, you can recover with no data loss. In this series, I'm pounding on each NAS to see how or if it recovers. Almost all the NAS reviews out there just talk about adding storage and the various apps that come with the devices. I haven't seen any that stress test the machine to the point of failure and back to restoration, which is the whole point of these devices. I've subjected each candidate machine to a series of torture tests. Beyond that, I look at performance, apps, user interface, and so much more. Today, we're testing the TerraMaster NAS F4220. My name is David Gewurz, and you're watching ZDNet's DIY Data Center series, which is part of my DIY IT column. In addition to punishing servers, we also explore 3D printers, fly drones, and regularly dive deep into advanced geekery for fun and profit. Before we get started on the TerraMaster, I'd like to remind you that I'm reviewing seven of these NAS boxes. If you'd like to know when the next review is up, feel free to click the subscribe button and the little notify bell in the corner over there. This time, I'm looking at the TerraMaster NAS F4220. TerraMaster is a brand I hadn't worked with before, so I didn't have any real expectations going into my testing process. I was pleasantly surprised. Setup was quick and relatively painless. This is the only two-bay NAS in our test series. It uses trays and tiny little screws to attach the drives. The little TerraMaster successfully detected the bad drive and made a beeping sound to indicate failure, passing test one, drive failure discovery. It did not physically indicate which drive failed, but the NAS's web interface made it clear. After popping out the bad drive and inserting a new mismatched one, I did have to go into the TOS software to perform a rebuild, which it did easily. Test two, recovery to mismatched drive, also passed. There were two RAID performance failings on this small machine that brought down its score. The TerraMaster did not offer a way to reallocate storage on the RAID to accommodate the increased drive sizes for our grow over time test. Resizing the RAID array's capacity was simply not available. Email notification was only through SMTP gateway, so that didn't work through my cable provider. That gave the TerraMaster a RAID performance score of three out of five stars. The TOS desktop UI is nice. I'd put it on a par with that of the very well-rated QNAP. It faithfully copied both Mac and PC files without a glitch. Plus, this small machine also got points for having a network recycle bin. It lost a point for having a power brick instead of a PC plug. It also lost more points because of the low selection of applications. At $150 per bay, it's right in the middle of the price per bay scale across all seven NAS offerings. But the biggest point loss came because its aggregate read-write performance was the slowest of our test candidates. All told, the TerraMaster NAS F4220 earned only three out of five usability and performance stars. Because it got a three in our RAID test due to the inability to scale over time, and it also got a three in the performance and usability tests due to performance issues and low app count, the TerraMaster NAS F4220 comes out of our contest with an overall three out of five star rating. It's a surprisingly nice machine with some limitations, but it's not best in show. For the best of the best, you'll have to wait until we discuss our next two machines. That'll be in our next two episodes. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video or the idea of stacks of storage makes you feel all squishy inside, go ahead and mash the like button. I'm David Gewurz for ZDNet's DIY IT. Go out there and hoard some bits.